I, I could actually preach anywhere from 10 minutes to two hours. It's just according to how we flow in the Holy Ghost. You need to read your Bible every day. I said you need to read your Bible every day. Every day. I read something last night after, of course, I was ready for this sermon that said that all good leaders are good readers of the Word. We've got to, we have got to get the Word in us. The Word will speak to you. And as, as we learn about praying through the tabernacle on Wednesday nights, and I, I contemplated just carrying it on into Sunday mornings, but as we learn about praying through the tabernacle, you're going to find out that there's, a, there's at least one place and maybe two on your prayer journey that there's a, a focus on allowing the Word of God to speak to you. Uh, not just a Logos word, but a Rhema word, a specific word. And while I was reading the Bible early last week, uh, I came across this passage that really spoke to me. And uh, then in the middle of prayer on uh, a couple of days ago, uh, another passage came to me and I, I, can't, I was torn between the two thoughts. But I feel like that the Lord wants us to share with you what he's given us, especially in light of the move of the Holy Ghost that has already been in this place this morning and the response thereof. Um. Nothing more rude. There's nothing more rude. Uh, and I, I'm ashamed to tell you that I've been guilty of this before. Not necessarily intentionally, but just caught up in my own thing. But there's nothing more rude than just ignore somebody. It's about as rude as it gets. Especially if somebody speaks to you and you ignore them. How many of you saw the, the judo match in the Olympics or saw a clip from it where there was an Egyptian and an Israeli uh, that were fighting and, and the Israeli beat the Egyptian and he stuck out his hand to shake it and the Egyptian refused? How many of you saw that? How many of you just two? Well, we got to tighten up a little bit. We got to tighten up a little bit, but it was considered an, an insult, a national insult and so upset was the country of Egypt that they sent him home. Didn't allow him to stay. So I'm telling you that when the presence of the Lord moved in here this morning, he's speaking to you. And it is rude to not acknowledge him in some way. Say, well, I don't really feel that good, or I feel that tired, or, you know, I had a rough night, didn't sleep last night. There's still time to take, just take a little bit. I'll never forget Brother Godair coming. And him saying, when I can't walk, he said, and I've got a walker, I'm going to pound the ground for Jesus. You know, I'm going to shake it up and down. We've got to, we've got to get, a, I don't know what's going on in our lives that's, that's so powerful and so profound that it can hinder us from just saying, thank you, Jesus. Huh? Psalms 30 and 1 says, I will extol thee, O Lord. Now, how many of you... Use extol in your everyday vernacular. Probably nobody. Remember that this was translated from the, the Hebrew to English in 16 and 11. They talked a little bit different than we uh, do nowadays. They didn't nobody back there talk like me. Amen. Amen. Uh, says, I will extol thee, O Lord. I just want to minister to you tonight. If I could keep from getting all hyped up and stuff, I want to. Then notice I said if. But I want to minister to us this morning. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. The word extol is exactly the same Hebrew word rendered exalt in more than one other passage, which means the state of being on a higher plane or moving in an upward direction. The psalmist then, then declared his purpose in saying, I will extol the Lord. He says, I will extol the Lord. I will exalt the Lord. I will lift the Lord up. Because
because he has lifted me up. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. So in effect, he is declaring, Lord, I will do for you in my way the same thing that you have done for me. I will lift you up. I will exalt you. I will extol you. That word lift means to be drawn up as a bucket from a well or as a prisoner from the pit, from a dungeon. It's, it's a process of being, of being raised up, of being lifted up. And the, the writer says, I'm going to lift you up. Can I submit to you and let you know that the only place, the one that is omniscient, that is omnipresent, and that is omnipotent, the only place that he does not automatically reign is in your world. He is everywhere in every place. He is all powerful, all knowing. The only place that he does not automatically reign, that he is not automatically the authority, that he is not automatically king, is in your and my world. So we get the opportunity as we have been lifted up, as we have been drawn up, as we have been uh, 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 brought out of the miry clay, if you will, we get an opportunity when we praise the Lord to lift him up. And so you've got to understand that according to scripture, that when we lift up the Lord, it does the same thing for him that when he, that you feel when he lifts you up. What do you think about that? I will lift him up. I will extol. I will exalt the Lord. Our, a powerful concept that will change our perspective of praise. Our praise is lifting the Lord because he has lifted us. Our praise is a recognition that when I lift my hands and I lift his voice and I say for the Lord is good for his mercy endured forever. When I say hallelujah, when I say thank you Jesus, when I say bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me, I am lifting up the Lord in my world and in my tabernacle. My praise is not for you. That's why we got to get away from the ideology. You stand up there and try to get us to do this and try to get us to do this and try to get us to do that. You're not praising the Lord to make me happy. And you're not praising the Lord because the beat is good. You're praising the Lord because he has lifted you. I make a choice to lift him up to a place he deserves. If we fail to praise him or if we refuse to praise him, then we are elevating whatever else is going on in our life above him. The only place where he can be anything less than the I am at all times. In the animal world, in the plant world, in space, beneath the earth and above the earth. Brother David, he is forever the I am. The only place that he's anything less than the I am is in me. Why do you think, and I, I preached this a little bit Wednesday night, why do you think the Bible talks about order my steps in your word or the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? It is because we are the only one of his creatures that has stepped out of what we were exactly created to do. The only one of his creatures that has a choice. A tree doesn't choose to, be, to spring up where it is. A river didn't choose to, to, to take the course that it does. A mountain didn't choose to rise up where it did. The lion slays the zebra because it's in his nature. And it is in my nature to groan and moan and complain and bewail my situations. It is in my nature to eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It is in my nature to seek vindication and to seek uh, 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 absolving and, and to make things right in my little life. But then when I make a choice to begin to praise the Lord, when I make a choice to begin to elevate the Lord and begin to exalt the Lord, it is then that I'm stepping back into the place I was created for. 
It's in me I exalt him. I make a choice to lift him up to the place he deserves. Can I tell you something today? The Lord spoke to me in the middle of our worship today. When I was feeling the Holy Ghost and I was feeling the liberty to worship and the power of God and, and the manifestation of His presence. When they're singing about that song, uh, you know, that, that, you know, the first thing that's going to run through anybody's mind when a big trial hits you is the idea of quitting. When the song says, I believe I'll testify God's been good to me, through every test and trial, I've got the victory. The enemy tries his best to make me turn around, bring me down, but my God's never failed me yet, so I'm going to stand my ground. No matter what comes my way, I will lift my voice and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. And the Holy Ghost, now you hear me right now. I wasn't thinking about this message. I was just praising the Lord and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, the reason why that some folks aren't lifting me up is because they haven't allowed me to lift them up. There are some of us that revel in being a victim of our circumstances because we have an excuse. We have something that we can, that we can lay a reason off on our, our failure to be committed and consecrated to what God wants. And as long as I keep this mess in my life, I have a, something I can say. Well, I would really like to live for God, but here's why I can't. That's true. So you say, well, I just really don't feel like praising him. You get lifted up. I can't preach about this and I can't think about this and I, I can't ponder about, about the Lord lifting somebody up out of a pit, out of a dungeon. I, we, we, Sister Leanne, we don't even grasp a hold of what it really meant to be lifted out of a pit. But Brother David, I can honestly stand here and say, before you with God as my witness, I've been lifted out of a pit. I've been lifted out of a dungeon. And you know what? If he, never, if he never does anything for me again the rest of my life, that was worth my eternal praise for him. But if you're having difficulty praising the Lord and you say, well, I don't know if I'd do it. Let me tell you something. There's some of you that got some issues. Oh, here we go. Please get this out of your head. I don't get no award if you all praise the Lord. I don't get no award. I don't get more money if everybody stands up and claps. It's not about making me feel better about myself. It's about a recognition of what God has done in our lives and what he's doing in our world. You just stop for a minute, throw the brakes on for a minute, and ask yourself, where am I today compared to where I was five years ago? And then you find out, well, I'm in a pit. Well, let's find out why you got there. Oh. It, 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 it really messes me up to try to stay calm. Especially when the Holy Ghost, and I've been battling and I've been wrestling and, and I woke up a few times in the night and I couldn't go to sleep last night with this pondering over and over and over in my mind. And then the Holy Ghost speaks to me and tells me some people have problem praising the Lord because they're still in the pit. They haven't been allowed, allowed me to lift them up, to draw them up. See, the Lord has drawn everybody, everybody that's here under the sound of my voice today, especially in this class. You're here because you want to be. You're here because you want to be. And I come to tell you tonight, as, as the watchman standing on the wall, you have got to let the Lord lift you up. There's some of you, one particular person, matter of fact, two particular people, that the thing that's stopping you from fulfillment is you're still trying to hold on to some of the principles and the mores and the values of the world God brought you from. And I'm telling you, you got to turn loose. Think about it. Can you see this picture of the power of God pulling and pulling and pulling and you're flailing around? Lord, I really want to be picked up out of this, but I'm going to try to bring as much of it with me as I can. You 
to know why you can't get the victory? Well, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. You want to know why you can't get the victory? Why you can't overcome this? Why you're still battling the same things? It's because you won't turn loose. We fight a bunch of battles of people that want to be in control. Let me tell you something. There's no greater feeling than to lose control. I'm trying today. I wasn't going to say this. But I'm trying today to be more clear about my teaching and preaching because I've had several people over the last few days tell me they had difficulty understanding me. Now, I... I'll accept responsibility for that. Except for the fact when I say, do you follow me? And you don't. You need to say, ain't getting it. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. For thou hast lifted me up. I want you to follow this. I've got to change your perspective tonight. Because there's some of us that you're looking to be lifted up so you can have victory over your enemies. Can I tell you tonight, or today, I've said tonight like seven times this morning. It may be because I've been up so long, it seems like a night. I'll try not to say tonight anymore. Even if I do, you know where you are, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the daytime, last I checked. But I, I, I want to be clear. I want to be simple. Uh, it, it, it profits nothing if I teach all this deep stuff and I preach all this deep stuff and, and you don't grasp it. Like I said, there's been, there's been a handful of people that have, that have mentioned to me just this week that they've had difficulty understanding what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, under the authority and the leading of the Holy Ghost, the Lord is not going to bring you out so you can beat your enemy. That is not why. Look here. He said, and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. Now, if you're keeping on living for God and keeping on pushing and keeping on pressing, waiting on Him to take somebody out, you're going to be waiting a long time. You're going to be waiting a long time. But, but look what the psalmist said. And it's not made my foes to rejoice over me. You've got to understand this. Please understand this. The Lord is not concerned with your enemies. Let me say it one more time. Oh, look, here's what you're thinking. Stop thinking. Just stop. If, that, if you're thinking something contrary to what I just said, just stop thinking. Because you're thinking wrong. Well, you don't know what they've done to me. I don't care. The Lord, Brother Pete, the Lord ain't worried about the devil. He's not concerned with the devil. You gotta understand this. He ain't fighting him. Brother Justin, he ain't fighting the devil. Brother David, he's already beat him. There's no fight, there's no war. The Lord ain't worried about the devil. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I know I'm walking in the Spirit. The Lord ain't worried about your enemies. He ain't worried about your foes. If He lifts you up, it's for you. The Lord is not concerned with your enemies. You've got to remember, read it in the Bible. He sent out the 70. And he sent them out two by two, if I remember the scripture correctly. And the Bible said, and the 70 returned with joy. 